Hello, Josie here. Welcome to the Yoga Local podcast. I hope you're well. Thanks for tuning in or watching. Um, I want to talk about power today. It's all kind of linked into our theme this month of being brave and and being brave um, in the sense of taking um, taking the steps that will move you towards realizing your inner power, your inner strength, your inner will, your inner determination, your inner courage, all things that we start to um, kind of excavate as we um, start to become committed to our, our yoga practice. And what I wanted to kind of really uh, hammer home is that um, this whole practice is a beautifully structured, scientifically sequenced, um, methodical uh, way of, of moving us from where we are to where we want to be. And I wanted to um, just explain a little bit about the science of Hatha Yoga, because you're probably not aware, um, and I certainly wasn't, even when I finished my first 200 hour yoga teacher training, um, that there are seven stages of um, a tr of traditional Hatha yoga. Um, so <clears throat> if you're like most folks who haven't really got um, much um, understanding of the yoga world, you probably think Hatha yoga is the gentle one, um, which really irritates me. Um, and my advice is if you want um, true yoga as it was meant to be taught I would avoid those classes that are just marketing on the gentle nature of practice um, it's misleading at best um, because actually Hatha yoga is so powerful um, it's this ancient science that's 5,000 years old and it teaches us not to lie on a mat it teaches us to master our minds, master our energy, and master this one incredible life that we have, which is uh, on paper a little unlikely. Um, it's a miracle, in fact, that we're all here. So it's about claiming your power, getting out of your own way, harnessing that will and determination that maybe you've come to recognize is within you to like, go deeper on some of those big questions in life. Who am I? Why am I here? And also um, to become more skillful in life, to become more skillful at your re responses to to life's many curveballs that get held, us at, um, get held at us, um, you know, at all times, regardless of, you know, how well we think we're doing in life the 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 challenges are going to come and how are we reacting and how are we um how are we staying true to ourselves in those moments so it's not a gentle ride life's not a gentle ride yoga is not a gentle ride um we're not here to just lie on a mat all day and call it a day so please don't come to our studio thinking that um, a good stretch, a bit of re relaxation is gonna solve all your problems, right? Um, I, I, I can guarantee on some level, you're aware that that is, n that is not gonna happen, right? There's so much more to it than that. On some level, we know that we have this inner wisdom within us that says there's gotta be more to it than just lying down and stretching. And there is, and it's just not being taught that way apart from uh, well, it's not been taught that way in many places. I, I and I can speak for ourselves that, that this is how we're teaching it, and this is what we're doing. We don't do the the fitness kind of yoga. You will get fit because it's part of the Hatha Yoga progression that we want to get our bodies optimized. We want to be physically ready for that path. But it's it's really um, the the place where we're not even off the blocks yet. So. Um, yes, if you want to really um, extract the full scope of yoga, then there is um, a way to do that. There's a way that this was meant to be taught, the seven stages of Hatha Yoga. So I just want to, to walk you through um, these seven stages and and show you the, the systemized approach um, 
And everything that we do here at Yoga Local is all feeding into that progression. So hopefully you'll get a little understanding if you're thinking of joining us in class, um, online or in the studio here, you'll start to figure out where you are on that pathway and where you may be needing to move towards. Because I think we get a little locked into just practicing for convenience, time of day, um, because we've got um, access to childcare that day. I mean, those are all very valid reasons and they will get in the way. But if you want to practice yoga, then we need to kind of start figuring out how we, how we start to progress and move through these seven stages. And we'll start with number one. So number one is when we focus on the health and the efficiency of our systems, right? Our health, our health is our number one priority. Um, Ayurveda, which is the sister science to yoga and meditation, is, um, is really fundamental to this work. It umbrellas yoga and meditation. Um, and yeah, it focuses on how do we get the body functioning well? How do we optimize it? What are we doing in terms of our lifestyle practices that get in the way of that optimization? So our Ayurvedic programs, our Ayurvedic retreats, um, and also our stage zero practices are going to start to give you um, that, that foundation. Number two, the focus is on strengthening. So mentally, that's about strengthening the mind. Um, removing those distractions, removing those unhelpful thought, thought patterns, um, you know, becoming the master of our mind. It's like quite often our mind is, is racing around doing its own thing. It's, our minds are powerful, but we're just not using them. We're not steering them in the direction that's going to be of any use. So it's about recognizing that and starting to use the power of the mind in a much more skillful way. Physically, we strengthen the body. Um, and primarily what we're looking to do is strengthen the, the core muscles of the spine. Um, spine is um, uh, one of the, the key, um, key parts of the, the body that we're, we're looking at because the, the spine houses the, the energy centers, seven energy centers um, that we work with throughout the seven stages of our yoga journey. So that's why the spine is, is um, one of the, the primary uh, focuses of our physical practice. We can, yes, we can have long legs and lovely, super flexible hamstrings, but that's not the goal. The goal is a, um, spinal extension. Okay. So strength class. We have a strength class here that helps to start to work on our strength and um, restore class is also working on the, on the, the body, but, but more so it's that, that mind, strengthening the mind conversation. So we move into um, the third stage where the focus is on making the mind steady, okay? So this is when we start to slow the practice down because we've got to start to um, reduce the internal speed that's going on, that constant racing mind that we, we're all very familiar with. And in order to slow the mind down, we have to slow our practice down, right? So it's counterintuitive to be doing a practice that is keeping the mind in, in that stimulated um, activity, right? The idea is that we need to slow the mind down. So we need to slow practice down. And that doesn't make it easier, by the way. It makes it a lot harder. Longer poses um, held for a longer peri period of time, slowing them down, slowing the mind down, right? We're used to our mind wandering off. We're used to the fast pace, the hustle, right? The hustle culture, which by the way, is really, you know, killing us in terms of stress. So it's a lot harder for us to, to do these slower, um, more purposeful practices that are actually going to slow the mind down and give us that opportunity um, to, to go to those more internal and subtle spaces that we're avoiding or we, we don't even know exist because our mind's racing through, through that all the time. So that would be our moon practice. This is stage one of the Hatha yoga journey. 
before it, it's more the prep stage. It's, that's what it's regarded as the preparation stage. But now we're getting into the, um, in, onto the ladder of, of moon, sun, fire. Um, still in moon practice um, is stage four, which is when we want to stabilize that calmness. So having worked really hard to get the mind still and steady, then can we work to maintain that calmness even when there's um, provocation, right? Because life will get chaotic. Uh, things will not go our way. Um, and that will t test and challenge our ability to stay calm, to stay steady and to reach into those internal spaces where we can make a much more grounded and um, from source, from um, that place of of wisdom rather than reactivity we can make a choice from there so the focus is here is on stabilizing that calmness so that we don't lose it when life gets chaotic because it will again we're still in moon practice um, on stage four when we move to stage five then we're moving into sun practice so here the, the focus is uh, now becoming um, moved towards our innate energy um, our life force power, our prana. And, and as we become more attuned to that landscape, then we start to recognize and become more familiar with the subtle energy, the currents, the vayu um, that, flow, that flow through us, through, through all things and these currents. And it's by, by developing this sensitivity to our energy flow that then we can uh, tap into our vitality. It's like going in and, and recharging every day, recharging our batteries, re, um, you know, plugging into the mainframe, so to speak, and um, re retaining our power and our vitality, our sense of thriving in life. Um, so that would be some practice. And still in some practices, uh, stage six of the Hatha Yoga path. And that is now all about intensifying and, and also directing that power. So with heightened um awareness and uh, now our minds are super you know <laughs> super skillful at being able to di be directed in a very powerful skillful way we can then start to learn to channel the energy that we've become more attuned to more aware of into specific locations and into specific activities um, so this amplifies our capacity for creativity for healing and also for um, that ultimate goal of, of yoga, which is self-realization, which is the, 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 uh, um, the ability to, um, to, to touch in on your true sense of self, true self, um, the, the part of you that is, you know, not your ego and not all those um, mental kind of, um, those mental, con mentally conditioned, ideas of who you think you are right it's that pure sense of who you are and we can only really access that if we if we're fully charged and um, for the job so that's some practice stage six and then finally the seventh stage of um, the hatha yoga path is is, is is fire and then we really we're really empowered now and the focus is on our power um, we become powerful when we un unlock our true potential and it's about going through this process so that when we obtain that power it is coming from a place of um of source so it's not coming from a place of ego and because power in in the wrong hands is is dangerous right we all know politicians and people in high places with power who really shouldn't have that power and it's destructive and um, corrupt at times. So what, through this process of the Hatha Yoga progression, through the uncovering, through the unfurling of who we are and, and becoming more t aligned to our true nature, that power is being placed in our hands and, and it's being placed in the, in the hands that, that are, are working from a place of um, of being a, f a force for good in the world, right? So ultimately, Hatha is um, a systemized scientific practice that's been time-tested over 5,000 years. That's been passed orally from sage to sage, from student, from teacher to student, 
for generations kept alive and we have this power now in our hands and we can choose to to follow it and um, become all that we can be and be that force for good in the world um, and and yeah like use it to 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 become all that we can be right it's yoga is power you know and it, it's really frustrating that you know it's been diminished to a stretch and relax kind of of practice which you know if that's what you need great but call it a stretch and relax class call it a stretch and relax class we all need to stretch and relax i'm not saying that's not a good thing but yoga hatha yoga is powerful and it's the path to fire all right of course doing this work sticking to something that requires consistency you know when we need to to commit to something that we've set out to do it takes discipline it's not easy and this is what brings me back to this um, theme of being brave because um you know we have to start to notice um you know how we how we go through life um how we feel about following systems how we follow, feel about following the rules will really play a, a big part in our success and and sometimes it it can be used as an excuse you know the rules can be be held so tightly and harshly that we we again lose that harmonious um relationship to power it should be a harmonious relationship to power supportive relationship to power the rules shouldn't be applied in a rigid brutal um kind of um <laughs> you know oh military way um and and equally if we you know disregard the rules or we avoid them completely um then you know our practice is going to be meaningless so whatever way we go with that whatever way we notice we're going with that we, we have to apply the rules of, of yoga and um and bring it back to our understanding of yoga which is a discipline that needs to be um pursued and embalmed with a very big dose of love because at times it is a rough ride especially when we see through this process that it's really the only one that's getting in our way is us <laughs> we're the ones that get in, in the way of our health and our vitality we are the ones that get in the way of our ability to claim our power and our strength um, and then as soon as we recognize that we need to be brave again, pick ourselves up gently and come back again. And guess what? Through that process, we are getting more and more powerful. We're getting more and more resilience. We are finding more and more trust in ourselves to do what needs to be done. Um, and yeah, it's it's the complete opposite to, to power as maybe, you know, it can often be defined. Um, and and seen in the world right and but power is not about bossing people around it's not about demonstrating your your feats of endurance or strength it's not about flexing your muscles it's about what i mentioned earlier it's about being that force for good in the world and using your strength and your wisdom to um to to make your life everyone's life better that's the goal um, it's the path to self-realization. It's the path to self-empowerment. And I guess what I'm saying is if you really want what yoga has to offer, what it was meant to offer, you're not going to be here for the easy road. Um, you, you will want to shake things up. You will want to find your big girl's pants or your big boy's pants. You want to be brave and step into that power and really live your one amazing life, which is, is wildly improbable um at best right so what do you say who's ready to be brave who's ready to step into their power um i would really love to welcome you to um you know the seven stages of hatha yoga progression to come and step into all these tools that have been passed 
um, to me generously, so, so generously by my teacher, um, Octavio, at the practice in Bali. The most generous, uh, the most uh, incredible teacher and the teachers that have gone before him and we have to honour that lineage, we have to honour that tradition, we have to honour those people that have done this work and are embodying it and passing it on. Um, so the journey away is, is one heck of a ride and um, it, all it takes is for you to be brave and dive in. So hopefully you're inspired to do that and please um, let me know if you have any questions um, or comments and I'll see you on the next podcast. Bye for now.